Welcome everyone. My name is Eileen Brandt. I'm the marketing manager for Grow ECD and you are joining us for a really enlightening webinar today about unlocking the power of parent engagement at your ECD center. Your parents are keen to be involved but how are you going to do this? How will you get parents involved? How will you manage this process? Uh, today we're not talking theory. If you wanted theory, if you wanted a handbook, that is not what we're doing today. We're really getting practical with real advice and real experiences um, from other center owners, and we're sharing our ideas and our learnings. So today is all about unlocking the power of parent engagement. And joining me today, I have Ati Diomfana. Ati is the owner of Hope Preschool, based in Blue Downs in Cape Town. And she's also an education mentor with Grow ECD, working with the center owners currently in the Eastern Cape in Kubeja region, where we've just launched a satellite office. Hi, Ati. Welcome. Hi, Helene. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so Ati has a lot of experience and she'll be sharing some of her wisdom today. And then an old friend of mine, Romani Roberts. I feel like we've walked a long road together, Romani. Oh, yes. Um, Romani is also a center owner and she is the owner for Sunbeam Preschool, which is based in Durban South. Um, she has over 12 years of experience. And Romani, did you mention that recently you are also the Durban South ECD Forum Chair? That's right. That's quite right. Excellent. So I hope lots of people are, from the Forum are joining us. This yes, afternoon. Durban South. Durban South Forum, if you're on the call, give us a shout out on the chat. Tell us that you're here. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, um, we're going to make sure this is one of the most productive uh, hours, lunch breaks you've ever taken. Please know that we are recording this meeting. If you miss anything, if a friend of yours desperately needs this, we are happy to share the recording with you afterwards. And let's get going. So the power of parent engagement. We are going to discuss today five hot topics very briefly, what actually we mean by parent engagement. We'll cover six very practical parent engagement tools and tips with feedback and ideas from Ati and Romani. We'll talk about the topic of getting fathers more involved as caregivers and parents dealing with complaints and problems correctly and how we can diffuse the situation. And finally, have you ever measured your parents' satisfaction and gotten any feedback? We'll share some ideas on how you can do that. So to start us off with, I just want to talk about what actually we mean by parent engagement. Mm -hmm. It is not you sending a WhatsApp message. That is a one-way communication. Parent engagement is all the activities you do to involve your parents and your caregivers in their child's learning and the child's overall development within this school setting. So really think of it as a, as a collaboration between your center and the families that you serve. Both are working together to support the child's growth, their learning and their well-being. So that means we have to create some opportunities for parents to participate in their child's educational journey. But parents can't sit back and say, oh, you're, you're the school, you're the educator, you, you raise my child. No, no, parents and schools have a shared responsibility for developing children. So it includes the communications you do, the parent involvement in your learning activities, partnership in decision-making, you might wonder how is that even possible? Do parents do parents even should I give give them a voice to make decisions in my school? We'll we'll share some ideas, um, and and really supporting this the connection between home and school, and empowering parents to realize they must be education advocates, and they are actually the first teachers for their children. So it really is an interesting topic. Um, Romani, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think on this topic of parent engagement and, and why you have found it so valuable and important? Um, for me, parent engagement is the utmost important. You know, without the parent actually being engaged, you don't actually have a direct link to the child. Uh, so it's actually meeting you halfway with that child, sorry, <clears throat> uh, with that child. 
And you actually end up forming a partnership with the parent. So it's not just you alone, it's the involvement. So you actually become a small little family with their family as well. Mm -hmm. uh, connecting all the dots with them and making sure that you are walking this road with them in quality education. Absolutely. Letting them know that. Absolutely. Um, oh, hello, Lynette. I see Lynette Francis commenting, saying, yes, Romani, thank you. She got your invitation. She's the owner of ECD Little Angels at Work Christian Academy and Daycare, and she is on the call. Um, there are so many hellos. I can't welcome everyone, but please, everyone feel welcome. And, and Romani, when you mentioned that parent engagement is so important, I also realize parents are part of the customers, right? They're the people paying yes. for the service. Yes. So yes. Crucial, crucial to keep them engaged so they can see the value, the value in what you are doing. You're not just 100 percent You're not just babysitting children. You are developing a <clears throat> child. So we're going to cover a few parent engagement tools. When I look at these tools, I'd say let's let's imagine there are these six tools. There's WhatsApp groups, communication books, notice boards, newsletters. I'll tell you about the free Lion app and parent meetings and workshops. Each of these tools are in your little toolkit to help you engage parents. Um, and you can use different tools for different things. So as we go through each of them, we'll talk about when is it appropriate to, for example, use a WhatsApp group versus sending something in a newsletter versus talking in a parent meeting or a workshop or an event? So we're going to talk, start off with something that's very popular, a WhatsApp group. And Romani is going to kick us off by talking a little bit about how they use WhatsApp groups in their school, what she would say you should do, and what she would say don't. Okay. Okay. So... With the WhatsApp group, um, and this really, really works for us because it's quick, it's fast information to a parent. And what we've used in our center, and, and, and we've also just come accompanied and used shared best practices with other schools is we, we have it as a push information um, communication tool. Uh, so we have it as admins only, that can respond on that WhatsApp group. I think that's very, very important. So you don't get parents getting all sorts of messages out there. <clears throat> Making sure that the messages are also simple, clear, and also that messages are sent on time and not lastminute.com. So that's very, very, very important. And um, yes, we do have a separate t uh, cell phone, for school designated just purely for school so it doesn't interfere with <clears throat> social stuff <clears throat> it's also a place that uh, you know we are really really fortunate to have grow that share the parenting um, information with us mm. the, what comes out new on the theme so we're able to share that information with them and parents get really really excited about that resource and it's also a place where we can remind our parents about, you know, what's happening in, in the week so they're fully prepared. And then, of course, it's also a where we must be very, very mindful of if you are posting, and I know statuses are something that I also just learned recently, people love statuses. So they, that's just, if you want to, to have somebody look at something, put it on your status. But they be very, very careful what you are actually posting, that it's not there, it's not abusive, it's not there to harm anybody, but rather to inspire and empower mm. and also take into account the Poppy Act. Do yeah. you have the permission to post children or stuff like that? Just be very, very careful with that. Absolutely. And Romani, I think what you're highlighting also is that if, if your personal uh, phone number is also the school phone number, then remember whatever you are posting on your status, the, the way that your profile picture looks, that reflects your school. That is your brand. So everything you do is visible. 
to the public and people are watching you. 100%. So, so make sure you're doing what lives up to the brand. Um, and I, I liked what you were saying, it's admin only. So, so you can share messages. And if parents want to talk to you, they don't put it on the group. They speak to you directly. 100%. Yeah. Um, and and also, so this is a little tip that I was taught once by, by someone who helped me understand how to speak clearly and write better messages. It's the, the five witches in the hut. So five W's, the for witches and the her for the hut. So the what, where, who, when, why, and the how. And when you're sharing a message with, with um, parents or whoever it might be, maybe you have a fun walk tomorrow. Make sure that your message explains what's happening, where is it, when should they be there, who should come, why is this happening, and how to participate. So as you go through the five W's and the H, you can check for yourself, is my message clear and does it have all the information people need? One hundred percent. Romy, any other tips that you have for, for <laughs> WhatsApp groups? I think that uh, you know it's it's a great place for uh, people struggling with um, enrollment. So we we start enrollment quite early in the year, like by end of July, we start already advertising for the new year. Mm -hmm. Okay, enrollments are happening. On your WhatsApp status, that is a place where you can use it and catch it and keep change. But make sure that you are also using quality pictures of education learning. Remember, we are not babysitting. We are educators. So it's important that you capture really good quality pictures um, of children doing stuff out there again. And you don't uh, have to visibly show the child's face of what they are doing. But... That is a great place to do that. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. learning does not only happen in the classroom. So if you are doing an excursion, make sure that that is put up there and let people know that that is part of learning because it's not only the four walls that we're learning, we learn outside as well. So that's also part, very interesting if you are doing excursions as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And perhaps you're wondering what type of resources could I share on my WhatsApp group, something that I could share with parents. So if you have the free Grow Giraffe app, you can go into the resource center. And these are just three downloads that I'm showing you. Uh, there's an alphabet poster. Uh, there's a document that shares the milestones for your child all the way from baby to five years old. And there's also grade R revision exercises. So you can imagine using these as great little PDFs or images to share with your parents that they can empower themselves, activities to do at home, grade R preparedness and looking at the milestones. All right, next up, a communication book. So um, many schools still use a physical book. And later I'll also show you how you can use the Grow Lion app. The communication book is still a valuable way to, um, to share feedback, give feedback on sleeping, mood, any incidents. Uh, and, and the tip that's, that we'll share now, Romani can talk about that in a second, is about using the, the book to communicate upfront and helping parents to plan. I also like when I hear some schools tell me they allow parents to write back in the book and send some feedback. And then you have a good track record of what communication has happened. Uh, between yourself, your teacher, and and the parent. Romani, you were telling me what goes in the front of your, your book. Okay, so we have a, a communication message book. For the first page on there is parents' contact details. That's the very on the cover. Contact details, emergency number, child's name. As you open the book, it's there. The next page you'll see is our um, planning for the for the uh, no our closures the, the next the second page is cl school closures and holidays mm. right there on the second page then you turn over it's the events of the year all nicely planned so if you ever look in when as you open the book you don't have to hunt away is it hidden away somewhere and it, it's right in the front of the child's book and so we can always just refer uh, parents to, to that page but just remember that planning is all done the year before. 
It's all done the year before. So parents have it up front. When they enroll in their child, they know they're going to get those notices and make sure they are put in there. The other thing it's used to keep receipts. Track of receipts are important. Uh, sometimes parents say, I didn't get a receipt or you want. It's all there in that message communication book. Very, very important. And again, I like, um, Helena, what you said about, with regards to parents writing us messages. Some parents write us really inspirational message. Thank you so much, teacher. You are doing a wonderful job. I can see the change and how excited my child is to come to school. Oh, we love that. That is what we yeah. are there to do. Yes, fantastic. Parents, if you're listening, please write us messages. <laughs> write us little love letters. We want to hear. Um, also, just a very practical thing is a notice board. So um, parents have a lot on the go. We all have a lot on the go. So at the door where children are being collected or dropped off, this might be a really nice tip is a dry erase notice board. And you can put up happy birthdays, maybe the theme of the week for your curriculum and add any little reminders. You know, that parent who keeps forgetting to pay for the outing, put the last dates and the reminders in there, <laughs> put an encouraging quote on there. Um, this is a nice way to welcome people at the door and share communication and reminders. Now we're going to, Atiyah, I'd like to talk to you. Um, newsletters. So I think a, a newsletter that discusses education and topics can be so helpful, but who has time to write a newsletter? I don't know. <laughs> um, you're already working from six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the evening. Weekends, people are preparing themes. Ati, can you give us some advice on, on engaging parents with newsletters and, and what we can do? Sorry, I forgot I was on mute. Um, so, you know, parents know that they are sending their children to school and they spend the whole day there. And we keep telling them that, okay, look, we're following a theme. Uh, this is the theme we're following or doing this week. But they don't know what the theme is or how the children or what activities they are doing. So the newsletter is great to send to the parents so that the parents have an idea of what the children or what the topic is for that week. For mm. example, if you are doing wild animals, you then get to see what the center is doing with the children, what activities, and also what activities the child can do at home uh, related to the theme. Yeah. So that is, yeah. Yeah, excellent. So at Grow, we have um, 40 weeks for schooling weeks and 20 themes. And th we have pre-designed what we call a parent bulletin. It's essentially a little parent newsletter, one for every theme. And we also have a few that's not about the theme. It might be about other things like uh, social, emotional well-being. And if you have the free Grow Giraffe app, you can go into the My Tools section, Resource Center, Go to the parent category and there you'll see bulletins uh, of newsletters for, for various themes. And you can download those. And if they match your theme, you can absolutely feel free to use that and share that with parents. For example, this theme here is habits. Okay, so there's some ideas of what children can learn. There's some tips for doing at home. There's a, on the fourth page an activity you can do at home. So that brings the child, the, the school home connection together. And now the school and the parents are working together, right? On the same themes and ideas. So I think that's a really great one and probably save you hours of work. <laughs> um, I find also that some schools like to print the newsletter. In fact, the school where my child goes, they print the newsletter and then very cleverly, they attach my invoice just as a gentle reminder that payment is going mm. to be due by the end of the month. So they've shared a newsletter once a month, a week, a week before um, the month end. And it's a nice way to get my parent bulletin. I see what's happening at the school, upcoming events, and my invoice is attached. Looks very professional. Now remember, oops, better pay this bill. So also just to add on the yeah. newsletter, so if you send a, a reminder uh, for the 
any event that you will be having. So you send the newsletter two weeks before an event. So you just let parents know that we will send a reminder for the mm -hmm. event, maybe a day or two days before the event. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's face it, we can all easily forget, even though we have diaries. So it's good to send those reminders. Now, uh, we've mentioned the the Lion app. I just want to clarify, maybe for those who are not sure about the, the Grow apps. So Grow ECD has three apps that, are, that help you run your preschool essentially from your phone. The one for the center owner is called Giraffe. And that's because you have the tall neck and you can see over the whole savannah. You can observe everything in your school. That's why you are the giraffe. And you are the gentle giraffe. You don't get you don't get swayed by the mosquitoes, you know, you, you're very calm. Then we have a lion app, and that's for our parents. So when you manage your app and you load learners, you do their uh, enrollment, daily attendance, track their fees, do their assessments. Parents can access that information for their child only on the Lion app. We also have an app called the Meerkat app, and that one is for your teachers. So that's if you want to um, equip your teachers to help you take daily attendance, conduct learner assessments, and also access their own training for professional development. I think what's really nice is that as the center owner, you decide what parents can and cannot see. Okay, so um, on the app, the, the parents can see their child's developmental progress or their assessments. You can use the free uh, assessment tool and assess the learners based on the age groups. I think, in fact, maybe next month and the month after that, we'll do mid-year assessments. And then if you mm. choose, then that can become available on the parents' app. And they can say, look, they can just imagine me look, sitting um, at work or sitting in the bus and saying, look, look, this is what my child did. Um, even if maybe my uh, I'm, a, I'm a working mom working in another province, I can see mm -hmm. what's happening to my child. You can also track your child's daily attendance register. You can view the school calendar. Uh -huh, no excuses. Check payment receipts. And parents can download their own parenting resources as well. So again, of all of that five, you can decide if you will switch it on or off for parents to view or not to view. If, if let's say, for example, um, you are not using the daily attendance tracker, maybe you switch that off. But why would you not use the daily attendance tracker? I think these are great tools. Um, and I think this is a fantastic way for parents to really feel connected to their child, even though they're not there the whole day. And they, they can see what's happening. So this is the section called My Child's Easily Center. I can see operating hours, the calendar, the address. Here I can view my child and I can click attendance or payments, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and if your center is using the Giraffe app and you're thinking, oh, how do I explain to parents how to get the app? Um, we can also help you with that. So there's a parent letter that you can download for free and you can share that letter to parents. You can download this little um, leaflet as well, which explains to them. Um, and you can use this to, and there's instructions as well, step by step of how to do it. Um, Ati, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the Lion app and whether are you using it at your center and what, what do you think? So we are not using the Lion app yet, but when I do introduce it, I saw one lovely um, tip that I can share is in not instead, but it also has almost the same as the message book where you are able to give feedback to the parents about okay. the child, uh, the child's daily um, uh you know, activities. How was the child? Did the child eat today? Was the child maybe uh, not very happy to be at school today? So you are able to do that. The parent can also view that uh, at any mm. time of the day. Mm. So I yeah, that is one tool that. that's going to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so yes. much. I really I appreciate it's, that. Yes, it's the section we call observation. So um, as, the yes. teacher, as a teacher, I can if I can use the message book or I can use the app and actually write my observations mm. in there. And um, yeah. and Ati, we know it's so important to write down any incidents and any observations, right? Yes. Because so, this. Mm. Yes. So you also have a section where you can comment on there and give an overall comment of the child's day at, at the school um, for yeah. the day. So also, um, because... 
I'm not really good with keeping paper and, you know, having all those files. The the tool or the receipts where parents can see the payment records of the child. That I also love because parents are then able to see, did I miss a month or did the uh, principal receive my fees? So then they will be able to see, okay, this is how far I am in the year with my child's fees. Mm -hmm. So that they can do while they're at home. You don't have to, um, you know, remind them or you could even remind them once they ask you look um could you please provide me with the month's receipt then you can easily tell them look it's on the app yeah yeah i think that also helps if you do your admin well every month and you keep track of income and expenses and and, and the, the fees received um then mm -hmm. you don't have to run and catch the parent at the door you know when they're picking up their child yes. the, parent, the parents dodging you they don't want to make eye contact um you can have a more adult <laughs> conversation and say look there is the record keeping and you can see that the fees for march are still due mm. now romani you're laughing or do you run after parents uh. yes dear yes dear and we've started running quite early this year <laughs> yes it's a it's it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely a reality um i'm just going to check in the chat um um Thank you. I'm seeing so many great questions. Okay. Lerata had a very good question. Lerata says, can you guide oh, wow. me through registering my teachers on the Meerkat app? So Lerata, good news. We have a dedicated app help desk. Uh, Wendy is sitting behind her laptop and she has a, a WhatsApp phone as well, ready, ready to take any calls that you have during the day. So if you need help with the app, uh, Tyrell will put the help desk details on the chat now. You can WhatsApp us, you can WhatsApp call us, you can call us, you can email us. And Wendy also speaks multiple languages. So um, we will help you with using the app. Okay. All right. Romani, this is a big one. Oh, this was a nice parent one. Parent meetings, parent workshops. It feels scary. Should we even do these things? How do we do it? So just for context, on the right-hand side photos the, the, with the blue background, these are photos from Romani's school. Uh, she recently hosted parents. And um, I'd love to hear, what did you do? How did you do it? <laughs> um, oh, you know what? This was such an exciting time for us. Um, hosting this you always have a little bit of fear because when it's we hosted it in the first term and we know it's our new parents coming in, it's different to last year. And however, I want to just reassure everybody, you know what? There's always an excitement of building new relationships. Keep your mind open like an umbrella. Keep your mind very, very open. Um, so we hosted our first parenting uh, workshop this year. But we incorporated that with uh, literacy. Mm -hmm. So we had the book dash. And parents were really, really excited about learning about literacy and the importance of reading to their children. And the, the fact that they were actually getting a free gift and taking it home and we saying, you know what, we're going to start reading. And we had teachers tell stories and read at, at our workshop. So it was not just where they came and they sat, it was a boarding meeting. It was really an interactive meeting. Mm. It was a chance for us to also go through our year's events mm. of what's happening, what, what are they feeling comfortable, how are they planning, and how to get things really rolling. So the one good thing that we had, I mean, we didn't expect such a great turn up. Fathers were present grandfathers were present. <clears throat> so <clears throat> whoever's dropping the child <clears throat> felt that they needed to be there. And we were really, really happy to have granny, grandpa, whoever needed to be at this meeting, come along and join. So we had a full room. And for me, that was really, really, do not limit yourself, parents, to, to just having only parents there. Sometimes grandparents are the carers of these children and they need to be included. They need to be included. But also have something exciting that's popping up on the side. So it's not just this boring meeting of where you're just pushing information. Make sure that it's a shared meeting. 
And so, yes, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, I wish we had had one of our pictures. We have a mascot, um, which is Roger. And Roger was there and he was sitting reading a book, holding his book. And so Roger's very much a part of school that's used as props and stuff like that. We took Roger to the meeting as well. And so I encourage principals, principals, do school meetings. You know, you always think to yourself, <clears throat> so will parents come? Don't worry about that. You need to invite them. And you need to invite them. If you have not put that invitation out, that means nothing's going to happen. The minute that invitation goes out, parents fill those seats. They come. They come. <clears throat> and we had planned it for half past five or six o'clock, so it was early enough. We kept the meeting nice and brief, stuck to the plan, and it worked out really, really nice. The people could still travel home in the light, have dinner, and because they needed to get back to their children. So I think the planning part is extremely important. We had all our teachers present because we want to introduce our teachers to parents. Mm. So all teachers were present. And I think that was it was such a good meeting that it was a chance for parents. I mean, term one and parents coming to us and saying, oh, I'm so glad that I invested in education with my child, with your school. Parents are excited about that. They're really and truly excited. So we don't always see some working parents. And so this was really a nice opportunity for us to see them and for get good feedback about what are you doing as a principal that's making sure my child is getting the quality education that we advertise. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe you're asking yourself, oh, I don't have a free book to give. Let me let me put the challenge to you. Rather than saying, what's wrong with my center? Ask yourself, what is strong with your center? What is your strength? What do you have? You have vibrant teachers. Maybe you have a great song that you play or sing. Maybe you have a nice uh, outside area. Think about the assets that you have that are are powerful and good and you know what parents want to play too and I'm hearing Romani you saying parents have had enough of a boring day at work they don't want to have another boring meeting at your center 100 show them the fun show them learning through play show them how they can sit on the mat and talk to the take on the left hand side this photo is that the, the, the center owner took a doll and she was reading the book to the doll to to show. And parents were laughing because why is she reading a book to a doll? But when you're laughing, you're learning. And she gave the doll to other parents and said, oh, the baby's crying, hold. So have fun with your parents and show them show them that learning to play can really happen um, and, and try it out. I, if you need some advice on this, maybe you want some guidelines. Mm. On the Grow Giraffe app, you can go to the <laughs> training section, right? And you can get access to training. We've loaded a training there called How to Host a Parent Reading and Literacy Workshop. Go through that. There's even a download with the facilitator guide. You can download that. Maybe you or your head teacher, you're using the facilitator guide um, and, and use that as it's fantastic guidance and host your own first workshop. They, you could also cover other topics. Maybe you have 10 tips for parenting. Maybe you have a workshop for, for four to five-year-old parents on getting ready for grade R and what it looks like. Parents are really eager to learn. And the parents who are not eager, they'll stay home. They'll stay home. So just don't worry about those. Uh, here is the photos of the, the what the planning a parent workshop uh, online course looks like. You'll see there's a free download also, top 10 parenting tips. This is a great one. You could print the top 10 parenting tips and you could host a little workshop where you do activities on each of these and empower parents and they take that home. All right, I'm looking at the time, so I want to keep going. Um, when it comes to father involvement, Sadly, over 60% of children in South Africa are growing up without their biological father present in the home. Yeah. And, and we know that fathers play an incredibly important role in supporting young people. So we, that's what's wrong, hey? I said, I said the, what's, uh, what's wrong and what's strong. 
So let's not focus on what's wrong. What is strong is that 78% um, of children in South Africa live in homes with adult men present. F brothers, uh, uncles, grandfathers, the mother's new boyfriend. And while they are not all the biological fathers, these men could make a big difference in the lives of children. If they became involved and they said, I will be a father role model. So we should invite them in to the into the to this. So we must just reflect and say, am I creating a ECD center that is father friendly? Is it a friendly place for fathers to come? Or when fathers come, do we look them up and down and we're like suspicious and thinking we need to protect the children? What are we doing to create father friendly centers? So um Ati, I'm hoping maybe you can talk to us about two or three tips for what we can do to to make our, our, our ECD. So system. again, when it comes yeah, when it comes to the feedback, I think it is yeah. No, is it perfect now? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, okay. So again, coming to the feedback. So, you know, as teachers, we always think oh, only the mom would be interested in knowing about the child's, um, you know, day, how was the child's day at school that day. But, you know, it's better if you could also involve the dads or the fathers and just maybe call this father to the side and say, you know, he was your son was such a good boy today. He ate very well. He was playing well with other children. And you are saying all of these nice things to the dad. And next time, you never know, the dad might be the one coming to ask, look, how was my child today? And that is how you then involve the father. Make him also feel involved in the child's um education life in your ECD. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And and I think also when we're speaking of, of mothers and fathers in our centers, um, children are always listening. So when we say things like, oh, men are just like that, we're really creating terrible stereotypes um, and, and we're influencing children in a, in a bad way. Mm. Um, if you're interested in father involvement at centers, I can highly recommend that you contact Hardlines. They have a Fathers Matter program and have created a specific ECD toolkit to support centers in creating father-friendly um, ECD centers. So Hardlines, Fathers Matter, absolutely contact them. And also we have a little one-pager do's and don'ts uh, that you can download from, you guessed it, the Grow Giraffe app. Hey, I, I'm, I'm sounding <laughs> Like I'm repeating myself. So the resource center in the giraffe app really is so helpful because you can find these easy free downloads. Hmm. Right. Can, can I also add yes. just one tip? Um, you know, I was at the center, I was going to the classrooms and you know what I did? I spoke to the dads as they were picking up their children and also extended the message in the WhatsApp group and asked, you know, um, we would like to ask a hand from that would like to help paint. And while the dads were there and they were very excited because they were saying it's for my child. It's not just for you, but it's also for my child. And I took photos of the dads while they were painting and the moms, they were the ones who stole the pictures from my status and they were putting them on their <laughs> pictures, uh, on their status saying, look, my husband or my, my child's dad was painting at their center. So you get them excited, not only when there's trouble. Mm, mm, absolutely. If you're only talking to me when there's trouble, then I don't want to talk to you. So create exactly. some opportunities to talk about positive things as well. Yeah. Absolutely. And just if I could jump in here, mm. um, I've had my grandchildren at school always looking for me and calling granny, 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 granny. And that became such a common thing that my teachers started calling me granny. And then the children called me granny. And they would say to my husband, where's Papa? So they formed this little link of, Where's Papa? Where's Granny? And you're in the shopping centre. Hi, Granny. Hi, Papa. And so it, we fill a gap where a gap might be missing. Mm. And we made that link a family link. And I think it's something that's so wonderful that we can create um, a family 
for where there is a missing grandpa or a missing granny. And I think it really just all fell in place purely because they were my own grandchildren calling me granny, granny, and they must have just thought, well, this must be your name. Mm. Granny must be your name. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just wonderful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm checking the comments and I see Hendrika. Oh, Hendrika has a, has a tricky situation. So she's saying that some of the parents do not check their children's message books or the emails or the media platforms. She feels like there's just no response. Even when I've had a request, the parents to come to the office where either the teacher or the admin staff want to speak to the parent one-on-one, they just refuse to correspond. Okay. They're quick to call when their child says something and they want an immediate follow-up. Um, but Hendrika is really feeling like she's she's trying to engage parents and they're not responding. If anybody else has any advice also for Hendrika to use the chat, let us know what you think. Um, Ati or Romani, do any of you have any thoughts on this? Hmm. So, yeah. okay. Okay, I see you. Yeah, I see and then Romani. <laughs> so, I think it's also, you know, the parent doesn't check the books. Maybe you could try another form of communication and mm -hmm. always be careful not to always, like I said, not to always make it a, a subject of conflict whenever you are contacting a parent mm -hmm. or wanting to have a meeting. You know, you could. You know the mom is always on WhatsApp. You you see them updating a status, and you could just maybe send them a, a short message of, "Good morning, mom. Your child has been um, uh, progressing very well in their gross motor skills. So please maybe buy them an ice cream this weekend. They've been a good boy." I'm sure the parent would see that. Okay. So the teacher does actually have other things to say to me other than reminding me of of paying fees. Okay. Okay, that's a very interesting tip, Romani. Yes, so uh, something that's also very interesting that you might want to add is maybe a lunchbox note because you have to watch the lunchbox. So write a lovely lunchbox note with a heart and a little smiley face and, and make it feel nice. Not a threatening, but just thinking, hope you had a nice day or um, little Sally was really good today. And it will always be nice to chat to you as soon as you're available. Mm -hmm. So use every opportunity, but not in a conflict or confrontation manner. Mm -hmm. And and I think this connects also to, I see Sandeep was mentioning, many of the caregivers don't have smartphones. So yes, we have to respond to the context, right? We have to, we have to think about what's valuable to your parents to your caregivers in your community so um, if there's no smartphones then you have to get, i'm thinking as teachers we get very creative little stickers little posts um i also have maybe one tip is uh once the the preschool did something where they taught the kids a song it's a thank you, mommy, thank you, daddy song. I don't remember the song's name, but the children were told to keep quiet and they were learning this new song. And then on the Friday, they were sent home with, with, with saying, you must, today, you're going to sing this song for your mom and your dad and your granny and your grandpa. And it was a song from the school to say, thank you, mom and dad. And uh, it's also like you're saying, Ati, if we, we, can, we can only, we can't make people do things, right? I know I try to sometimes make my husband do things. It doesn't work at all. But we can offer the opportunity. And those who take it must take it. And those who don't want to yeah. must not want to. But we must um, also make sure we're expecting the best from people. So that in, we're not maybe the way we're saying it, we're saying, oh, I'd like you to come, but I'm already thinking you're not coming. Because that will come across in how we... Yeah, definitely. Mm. Okay, I really hope, Hendrika, we will... Hope we are going to look to you and we would love to hear how it yeah. goes. If maybe you just try a few things and keep going. Don't give up. Let's talk, Romani, about when it's not going so well <laughs> and you do have a complaint or a problem and the parent is not a bit happy. Tell us about your experience with this and, and what we can do. Okay, so... You know, we are really, really fortunate that most of our children are dropped off by a parent. 
So it would either be a message, please, when you're dropping off the child, please spend, just pop in 10 minutes just to see me briefly and let's chat. And this can sometimes be done, especially um, if we are doing a, a referral, maybe we need to refer a child to for a speech therapist or something, and we just need to say to the parent, would it be okay for us to write the letter? And things like that can maybe spark a parent. So it's necessary for early intervention. It's really, really necessary for early intervention. But the parent might not be ready to receive it. Mm -hmm. And she might, no, 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 not, not today, Romani. But you know what? We've learned as we've gone down, gently down the line, that maybe go and think about what I've just spoken. Don't make a decision now. Think about it. And when you're ready, you come back to me. So let's give ourselves a, a timeline. Give yourself a timeline and depends. Otherwise, we'll all go and sleep and forget about it. Give yourself a timeline and say, well, let's revisit this conversation in seven days' time. Mm -hmm. And let's take it from there. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, it's worked for me. Remember that the tone of your voice is extremely important, the way you speak into that person. And just remember, you never know what space they're coming from. So you're always going to make sure that that person is put at ease, first of all, when you speak into them. If it's a difficult question, and sometimes it can be a family issue that you maybe need to address, just remember, be sim sympathetic and show empathy to them as well, because they might need it. They might even need a hug from you. So don't be scared to reach out and say, can I give you a hug? I'm with you on this. We're journeying together. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are human. We are human. And they want us to, they want to feel connected. So I've had parents come back to me and say, thank you. I so needed that conversation. I so needed to hear that conversation. And lots of times, those difficult moments might have aroused by, by a child coming and acting out at school. And mm -hmm. In the meantime, the situation was actually at home. And I always say, our biggest whistleblowers are our little children. Are our little children. But if it, and so we need to be really, really careful around them. But we need to treat our parents. They are, they are our gold. They, are, they keep the wheels turning of that center. So yeah. let us appreciate, let us show empathy. And I know together we become winners in a situation like that. And even if if it comes to where we don't actually agree on something, just say, well, at least we tried. And you know what? Maybe next time it'll be better. Or what? But make sure that we believe on a happy and a laugh, a good mm -hmm. note, a caring note, ki kindness can. Absolutely. And um, and Ati, maybe you can share with us as well. Maybe you've had an incident that you can can relate to us and, and how it played out or or an example of, of what you've experienced. So I always ask the parents, please, I am very, you know, I'm working with children and at the time I've got my life. Please don't send me a message on WhatsApp and tell me on a Friday. Um, hi teacher can we please talk on Monday oh my goodness I'm not going to enjoy my weekend because I'm going to worry what is that parent coming to complain about <laughs> so it's better to tell me hi teacher can I please see you on Monday I would just like to discuss my child's progress hi teacher can I see you I would just like to you know so it's better that way and you have an idea of how you're going to tackle whatever, uh, you know, complaint or whatever topic you will be talking about with the parent. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 just easier that way that you have an idea, even though, you know, you get parents that just, you know, come in and they start going on and on about, you know, this is what I'm unhappy about. And you need to calm yourself as a principal. First of all, the place where you are at, you are working with children. You wouldn't want your children, you know, to see or, you know, a witness the principle between the uh, parents, uh, you know, going on at each other or, you know, shouting at each other. That's what you don't want. Even with the teachers, mm -hmm. you don't want that. I always tell the teachers, you know, if a parent wants to speak to you, they need to do it through myself. And if 
they want to speak to you, it cannot happen without me. I need to 100%. be there when they are speaking to the teacher so yeah. that whatever, you know, <laughs> things and, can be said, I am able to be there. Mm. Absolutely. And I think as the center owner, you're not in every classroom. And that's why it's yeah. so important that your teachers understand why they need to record any incident. If there was a biting incident, someone fell off a chair, someone was pushed, write these things down and proactively share it with teach with parents because it's even worse when tonight the parent sees the blue the blue mark and they're like what happened here rather mm -hmm. if they knew in advance Sisanda fell she's absolutely fine she will have a blue mark um, I have checked what happened and I can assure you it was an accident or I have checked what happened and we can see blah 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 be proactive don't try to hide the incident. Um, I think so. What I've I've had to deal with many difficult customers in my life. They weren't parents, but I used to work in retail. And when customers get very very upset, I find that half the thing is allow the person to just share everything that they're unhappy about. Let them get it out. Let them talk. Let them rant and say everything that's wrong. And you ask them, and is there anything else? And, da, da, da. and what is there anything else? Let them get it off their chest. You know what? You might be the first person actually listening to them today. Um, and so many of us don't have a chance to listen. And then you can, you don't have to say you're sorry if you did not do anything wrong, but you can say, I'm sorry that you are unhappy. Or I'm sorry that you are disappointed. You're not saying, I'm sorry I was wrong, but you can say, <laughs> I'm sorry that you are not happy. I'm sorry that you are disappointed. Let's see what we can do to figure this out together, which is what Romani was saying. Let's figure this out together. Okay. So I hope that is helpful. The other very good tip on here was, I don't know where it is. But you know that parent, they WhatsApp you, they WhatsApp back. And there's a WhatsApp here, WhatsApp back. 99 WhatsApps later, still not sorted out. Don't go down the route of WhatsApping back and forth when it's an important issue. Rather pick up the phone, or see the person, see in person, because people get very worked up on the messages back and forth. When you hear a voice, it calms you down. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sharing a lot of information today. I hope you are finding this helpful. Hi, I see Felicia Jones is saying it's very interesting and well presented. Thank you from Ubunya Education Center in Danun. Thank you, Felicia. I'm glad we are supporting you and many others. Um, I'm looking at the time and I'm going to skip this last section, but we will share the slides. This is if you want to host a parent survey. Um, the main point on the parent survey is ask for feedback. Has anybody ever asked you, what do you think of me? What do you think of my, my service to you? You feel very heard. You feel very heard. And it's a great way to, to, to ask for feedback um, before you even needed we have shared some survey questions here as well maybe you want to use google forms which is a free tool to create your own survey and you can ask parents for feedback on all of these things and you can think about how you can improve your center okay so um i want to the last section i'm going to talk more about what can grow do to help you uh, i'll go into more of the services we offer and how we can support you and um, so i want to wrap up and hear Final thoughts from you, Ati and Romani, on the topic of parent engagement, and then I'll go into the section on how GROW can help you. Um, Ati, final thoughts. Yeah, so like like Romani uh, explained earlier, your relationship with the parent is only about the child. So if there's no relationship between you and the parent, then the child will also feel a little, you know, if you don't involve the parents, the child will feel it because when it comes to parent meetings, the parents are never there. When it comes to fundraising events, the parents are never there or the child never takes part in any fundraising events because the parent just does not want to be involved in the center. So try ways to get your parents involved in your center. If you see that there's a parent that has never taken part in anything, that's related to the school. Try to invite them personally and tell them, mm -hmm. you know, your child is going to be taking part 
and they will be this kind of character. They're going to be maybe the lion in this act or uh, event that we'll be having. And it will be very lovely to have you come and watch your child, you know, um, participating in this lovely event. So try to involve them in many ways as you can as principals. Thank you, Ati. And Romani, from you? Uh, from me, I just say, you know, uh, lots of our children um, uh, come to us via word of mouth. So it's families coming to us or it's cousins coming to us. And that is the best way of advertising is by word of mouth. So one of the things that when a parent comes to enroll a child, I always say to them, please tell me, how did you get to know about us? And they will share that experience and tell me. And I'm like, wow, thank you so much for sharing that experience because it's always so nice. I mean, they write them, you ask them, are you still going to be shopping for other schools or have you made a decision? No, I'm here yeah, because I've made my final decision. And I think that's one of the good things about the way you interact with your parents. It says a lot about you as a person, your character, who you are, how you carry yourself within your community. All that is in one, is a bundle that you are selling. You are not just selling your services at a, as an educational uh, center. You are selling who are you and what you are in that community as well. What, are, what, what, are you, what is your character? What are your standards? What are your values? And so with that, I think that in itself helps with the parents' engagements. And most times people will say to you, I know you, or I've heard about you. And I think to myself, well, then you know what? There you are. And it is true. Your, your name and your reputation go ahead of you. Absolutely. And essentially what I'm hearing also is that everything that you're doing is marketing your school. So parent Absolutely. engagement. So don't think of parent engagement something you need to also do some other time. Parent yes. engagement is part of fundraising, is part of quality yes. education, is part of marketing, it's part of your business sustainability. So engage in your with your customers. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So for those of you interested, you found this interesting. You think how what else can Grow do to support me, to support my center? I've spoken briefly about the free ECD apps, the one for the center owner, the teacher, and the parent. Please reach out to our help desk. We offer training on how to use the app. Uh, if you're not comfortable with the app yet, don't worry, we will show you how to do it. Maybe you have an administrator or a, or a daughter, someone who can support you. You can use the app to run so many things for your center and save a lot of time on admin and you know all of the, the all of the stuff we to get us back into the classroom, right? We don't want to spend all of the time just just on our admin. Uh, one of the tools that's very exciting is the learner assessment tool. You can run a professional learner assessment for every child based on their age and assess them on all the developmental milestones and the elders. And you have a professional report that you can show parents. But even more importantly, you can sit with your teachers and say, in this class, children are struggling with fine motor skills. So let's make sure we're doing this. Or in this class, this learner needs more gross motor activities. So the learner assessment tool is for free. Anyone can use it and it's very, very helpful. Uh, there's also great online training that you can do there anywhere in the country. So even if GROW is not in your, in your area, you can do the online training on teacher development, learner assessment, registration, parenting skills, marketing, budgeting, fundraising, so much okay and enjoy that you'll get a beautiful certificate of completion as well when you are done the next thing i want to talk about is if you are based in johannesburg durban cape town or Kruvecha, i invite you to sign up for the ecd small business accelerator this is a training course mm -hmm. that is six days so um uh, six modules over six weeks you come one day a week and it's 600 rand in total and it includes all the training, the handouts, a lunch, a certificate of completion, and training by a really good facilitator. And we're gonna show you 
we know you already have a heart for children. We're going to show you how to develop your head for business so that you can bring both together um, and, and run a better center that provides better education. So our next uh, small business accelerator starts in May, only 25 seats per region, maximum 25 seats. So make sure you go online, you book, and you pay to secure your seat. And you'll be part of an amazing group of other center owners and you'll learn from them as well, okay? Um, and then when you're at the, at the ECD Accelerator, maybe you're interested, how can I get the grow curriculum, the classroom mm -hmm. kits, the training, the mentoring? That is what we call our small business program, okay? So if you need a program, uh, a three-year program to help take you through all the steps of improving education and business sustainability, the small business program is the one for you. And you can find all the info on our website. You can call us and it includes a big package of services, curriculum, classroom kits, training, mentoring, registration support, and low cost finance if you need support to make it affordable. I have spoken a lot. I think I'm, oh, I forgot to mention this one. What, Helene, what if I am in Humpumalanga or Free State or Northwest or mm -hmm. somewhere where I can't get these things? The curriculum that we have, which is for two to five year olds, is available in the app. And you can unlock it in the app for 3,500 Rand for the year. Or if you just want to buy one term, like a term two, it's a thousand Rand for term two. And for that thousand Rand, it's unlocked for the entire school all your teachers, all your assistant teachers, and you as the center owner. And you can see the, the, the themes and a step-by-step -step guide on what to do to implement the curriculum. Videos, voice notes, the songs. It's not boring. I promise you, it's not a boring old book. It's a fun and exciting way to implement your teachers, to, to access a teacher's guide. So screenshot this. This is our app support help desk number, our regional office numbers and email addresses. Please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you and see how we can work together and support uh, your ECB center. We are on time. And I just want to say thank you so much to my guests for stimulating the conversation and such helpful advice. I really appreciate it. And we hope to see everybody at our next webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone. you, Lillian. Goodbye. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you, Ati. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, Here we go. <laughs>